Hello and welcome to this week's edition of The Olive Tree, the programme that keeps you up to date with what's going on in Israel through both Jewish and Palestinian eyes by telling the stories of the believers who live there. David Pelegi has lived in Israel for over 30 years. He's currently the rector of Christchurch in Jerusalem. Some of you listening to this programme will have visited this little bit of England close to the Jaffa Gate within the old city of Jerusalem. David begins by explaining the message and relevance of Christchurch today. The message is actually very simple, and it's a biblical message. You may recall that when the baby Jesus is brought uh, into the temple, Simeon takes the baby into his arms. And Simeon says about Jesus, this is the glory of Israel and a light to the Gentiles. And basically, that is the message of Christ Church. We are holding up Jesus as the glory of Israel and as a light to the nations. Very, very simple. Or you may put it in some people, actually, uh, I like to put it at times in, in other words, that Jesus is the Jewish Messiah. That's our message to the Jewish people. And our message to the Gentiles, Jesus is the Jewish Messiah. And, and that in both cases, uh, the message is is basically the same. For the Jewish people, this is the son of David, uh, promised by the prophets. And for the Gentiles, the message is, we need to take the message of Jesus' Jewishness or the context of his Jewishness very seriously. Because without understanding his Jewish world and his culture and his language, we're really not going to understand fully his message and we will not be able to be uh, his disciples. What sort of people come through your doors? We have the world coming through our doors. John Wesley once said, uh, the world is my parish. I almost feel like I could uh, borrow that line if there are no copyright uh, issues uh, involved with that and say that for Christ Church, the world is our parish. We have people from every corner of the globe, every nation of the world that come into Christ Church. They come for rest, sometimes they come for coffee, they come for prayer, they come for meditation, they come to be ministered to, and even more importantly, we are uh, in Jerusalem, and we're in a largely uh, Muslim Arab uh, part of town, and uh, we have lots and lots of uh, Muslims and Arabs who come in as well, sometimes Arab Christians, sometimes uh, Arabs who are not believers. And then we have a steady stream of uh, Jewish visitors. Uh, again, they come for coffee, they come to look at the unique and unusual church that we have here, and some even come and ask the question, do you have a Bible? What should it mean to me? Can Jesus help me? Can you pray for me? Uh, so on and so forth. So, uh, many people with many different needs. We're sat in the library here at Christchurch. Now, I've been here many times, but had no idea you had this, this room. And you're telling me that people come here because they're interested in the history of this place. And Christchurch, run by CMJ, has got a very long history, hasn't it? We are the oldest uh, Protestant uh, church in the Middle East, and uh, we've been uh, in Jerusalem and uh, this part of the world since the 1830s, the middle 1830s. And Christ Church has contributed an enormous amount to both uh, Jews and Arabs uh, in this country through their hospitals, through their schools, through their um, industrial uh, estates or vocational training. Uh, and. Uh, it's a very, very important part of the story of Jerusalem. It's an important part of the story of Palestine, actually, and it's an important part of the story of, uh, uh, of Israel. And so we have uh, many visitors, Jews and Arabs, who want to come uh, and they want to connect the dots, so to speak. They want to find out more about their history. And uh, it, we're an essential part of the history uh, of this country uh, in the 19th century. And uh, so we have, uh, consequently, we have many, many visitors. And uh, as a result, 
uh, these visitors, when, not, when they see the church and they hear our story, will oftentimes ask us questions. And uh, that gives us the opportunity to share uh, our faith and to share about the good news of Jesus the Messiah to, uh, to both Jews and Arabs. And we can do it in such a way that nobody feels uh, very threatened or nobody feels offended. Uh, but it is, a, uh, it is a very effective way of uh, being a witness is by using our history um, as that uh, witness. You were telling me about uh, your Christmas services and how, how many people, curious people, came just to find out what, what happened, what Christians believe at Christmas and how they love the music and they come just to, just to, be, just to sing Christmas carols. They do. We have, uh, we, uh, on Christmas Eve, we have uh, oftentimes many Muslims and Arabs who will come and uh, join us for carols uh, in the early evening. But uh, as the night uh, wears on, the church and the courtyard of the church is packed uh, full of Israelis, uh, Jewish people very curious about this Jew, Jesus, who, uh, of course, becomes the most, uh, uh, really the most important uh, Jewish person who ever lives. And uh, Christmas is just something that uh, stimulates their curiosity, something they see in movies and films, or if they've traveled abroad, they've uh, been in European countries uh, or Christian countries during the Christmas season, uh, many find it very appealing. And uh, when they come, when they return, they will oftentimes want to know more about Christmas, about the Christian community, about how we celebrate. There's a wonderful, wonderful intellectual curiosity amongst Israelis, uh, something I find uh, very, very refreshing. And uh, as a result, we will have th literally thousands of people here uh, on Christmas Eve. We're not trying to convert them or take advantage of the situation. We we do hand out Bibles for those who ask and who want to know more about the Christmas story. But we just try to be ourselves, and we, we, we want to celebrate Christmas. And as a result, uh, many will come in, into the church. We have caroling uh, for f five or six hours, and then uh, as we get closer to midnight, we end up uh, having, a, having nine lessons in carols. And uh, we just have literally thousands of uh, Jewish people who, who are joining in. Uh, with us or who, who come to watch and very, very curious. We give them Christmas cookies and, and mulled wine, and uh, so they take away a little bit of the Christmas spirit. And many uh, ask questions, and they come away with a clearer understanding of, uh, of how we see Jesus and how we have uh, interpreted his life as being the, the Jewish Messiah, being the glory of Israel. Now, David, people listening to you will be picking up this sort of gentle American accent. But actually, you've lived here in Israel probably longer than what you've lived out. You've been here for over 30 years. So you've been the rector here for three years. But what brought you here originally? Well, uh, Julia, you might say, and I don't say this flippantly, but I can say it was a divine compulsion. At age 24, I just finished university. I was recently married by two or three months. I felt a call uh, to go to Israel, but it wasn't just a suggestion or a hint or an impression. It was as if a thousand ton of bricks uh, fell from heaven, and every one of those bricks that hit me in the head said, go to Israel, go to Israel. I had no idea why I, had to go I was going to Israel. I had no idea what I was going to do here how I was going to live, how we were going to maintain ourselves. I just knew that we had to go to Israel, as if uh, somebody was pushing me, pushing me. I was compelled uh, to, to come. And uh, after a few months of praying and seeking confirmation, we got on a plane. And uh, not knowing where we were going to stay or what was going to happen to us, we landed in Israel almost 31 years ago. And uh, seems like a crazy story, but it really is a story of God's faithfulness and God's provision. And uh, we have been here uh, for over three decades. We have had three children here who have been raised uh, in this 
city and uh, and in this country, and uh, we're confident we have found what the Lord has uh, called us to do, and uh, He's been very faithful to care for us and to provide for us uh, during this during this whole time. So it, that all happened in Tampa, Florida. So you've been here for three years. What were you doing before you were rector of Christ Church? Well, for almost 20 years, I was uh, running the uh, ministry of Shorish Study Tours. This is part of Christ Church, part of CMJ. And uh, our passion at Shorish is to help people to come to a deeper knowledge of Jesus and to help them to be better disciples. And uh, we reckon that uh, the, one of the best ways to do this is by helping folks to come uh, to an understanding of the context in which he lived, uh, which will enable all of us to uh, understand his sayings, to understand his teachings, and then to, and then to put them uh, into practice. So basically, it's Jewish roots, and that's what Shorish is about. It's Jewish roots on a coach, you might say. But I have to stress, because people hear a lot about Jewish roots, and it's sometimes controversial, that the goal of Jewish roots uh, is not uh, the worship of Judaism, with all due respect to Judaism, uh, or the, the goal of Jewish roots is not about worshiping uh, Israel or perhaps uh, approving of uh, everything that Israel does or supporting Israel unconditionally. The goal of Jewish roots is Jesus and coming into a, a deeper, deeper relationship with Jesus and ultimately a deeper relationship uh, with the Father. That's See, the goal. David Pelegi, the rector of Christ Church in Jerusalem, sharing his story. And you're listening to The Olive Tree with me, Julia Fisher. The Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund is a Christian charity based in the UK that supports the needs of both Jewish and Arab Christians living in the Holy Land, especially those involved in reconciliation. So if you'd like to know more about our work and receive our free bi-monthly newsletter, please either visit our website www.olivetreefund.org or write to me, Julia Fisher, at the Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund, P.O. Box 850, Horsham, RH12 9GA in the UK. I'll be back at the same time next week for another story from the Olive Tree. Until then, goodbye.